Hi friends. I'm doing this video today with my iPad because my favorite little camera, it's a Panasonic. It broke. Not the camera's fault. I had it on a tripod up on top of scaffolding while we were painting the house, uh, thinking, well, maybe that'll be something for a video someday. And it fell off. It went down a full story and hit the uh, sidewalk and it's dead. Like I said, certainly not the fault of the camera. I like that little camera so much that I immediately ordered another one. Uh, uh, Amazon, yes, you can get Amazon uh, uh, shipments here in Mexico. And uh, it was $197, and you do pay an import duty. I think it was $32, which would be 15, 16%. Uh, import duty on the products that you would order from Amazon. I think there are some products that are duty free, but electronics certainly is not going to be one of them. Anyway, I thought I'd talk to you today about why we stay in Mexico. And by stay in Mexico, I don't mean that we stay here all the time. We do travel, and if you watch my videos, you know that we keep a motorhome up in the United States. And we enjoy that immensely, and we like traveling in the United States. Um, so this isn't about uh, why I hate America. <laughs> it's about why we have continued, after 18 years, to maintain our principal residence here in Ajijic, Mexico. And why we have no intention of changing that for any foreseeable future. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Well, I thought it would be nice to do the video out there in the sunshine, give you a little bit different view in the background, but as I reviewed the beginning of the video there, it looked to me like I was a zombie with uh, shadows on my eyes. So I'm back here in the house uh, in one of my favorite spots. I guess if we're going to talk about why we stay in Mexico, why we maintain this as our principal residence and have no intentions of changing that, um, the short answer would be <laughs> because after all these years, it's home. Um, of course, uh, when we're in the motorhome in the States, we feel like the motorhome is our home, but home home is here in Mexico. and. Um, whether you have ruby slippers or not, there's no place like home. In order to begin to explain the feeling we have for Mexico, I think I have to explain a little bit about why we live in Mexico in the first place and how that started. I've done a video about that before. Um, it was called Why Mexico? And a lot of that video was about uh, the story of being screwed by Blue Cross Blue Shield and saying to heck with that and canceling the policy and uh, saying, well, well, we've got as good or better health care for lots, lots less money in Mexico and deciding to stay here. But that was a very small part of the story. Some of the rest of the story I've told in bits and pieces here and there, so uh, if you've heard some of this before, please excuse me for repeating myself, but I have a lot of new subscribers who uh, maybe don't know those parts of the story, and none of you know some of the parts of the story that I'm going to help you understand today. We were 55 years old, 55 and 54 at the time, uh, me and Lynn, and uh, the business that I had been in for 27 years, um, it went away. Uh, I was self-employed, I had a small business, and I had contracts that I relied upon and got uh, weekly commission checks for these contracts. And I lost one of the major contracts. And so all of a sudden, at the age of 55, uh, I found myself in this situation. And why do I want to talk about that today? Because 
I think there are a lot of people in the United States who are in their 40s or 50s or even 60s and they're going to find themselves in the same situation. My situation was that all of a sudden I have lost half of my income. Now, if you have a job and you work for a big company or a small company and you lose your job, maybe you lose all your income. Well, I had other income. I wasn't about to um, be pushing a shopping cart in the alley looking for groceries. But um, losing half your income when you're used to living on all of your income it can become a problem. So here was my situation. I had debt, um, and I could service that debt. I, I had enough other income to pay it, but I was in debt, as many Americans are at that stage of their life where they think they've got another 10 or 15 years to work, and um, they're not worried about having credit card debt and consumer debt. Um, I owed the dentist $7,000, and part of that was still, you know, paying off the kids' braces. Um, I had thousands of dollars worth of credit card debt, which again, I was perfectly capable of carrying and not too worried about. I had business debt, uh, thousands of dollars, and if I added it all up, I think I was probably $70,000 in debt. And again, I wasn't worried about that when the money was coming in and I had my job and my standard of living and I lived in a nice house in a great neighborhood in Portland, Oregon. But, um, <laughs> losing half your income makes you have to think about things. So here's what we did. Um, first of all, we sat down, uh, my wife and I, Lynn, and we said, well, what the heck are we going to do? We're 55 years old. We can't really afford to retire. We could afford to retire, but um, it wouldn't be a smart thing to do. So, what's the alternative? Well, Jerry's got to go look for a job. <laughs> and that wasn't the first thing on Jerry's mind that day. You talk about what's on your mind today. Well, that wasn't it. Uh, I had been self-employed since the age of, you know, 26. I pretty much uh, got my businesses going well enough that I didn't have to work very hard after the age of 33. And uh, at the age of 55, going back to work and having a boss just really wasn't something I wanted to do. So what are the alternatives? What, are, what, what else could we do? We decided to take a look at other places in the world that might be more affordable on the little bit of income that we still had coming in because we're 55 years old, we're seven years away from 62 at which time we could get some social security, we're 10 years away from having affordable health care in terms of Medicare and a supplement. And uh, things were looking bleak, not in terms of, you know, going hungry, but in terms of losing what we had spent years accumulating in terms of financial assets and, and money to live on for the rest of our lives. And when you're 55, it seems like there's probably going to be a lot more of your life. <laughs> I'm 73, and it still seems like there's going to be a lot more of my life. Well, the first thing that we decided when we sat down and said, what are we going to do about this, was we decided, number one, we needed time to figure this out. So the first thing we did was we put our house on the market, and we sold some other assets. Um, not big assets, but like, you know, I had a coin collection I sold for $6,000, whatever. Anyway, uh, we put our house on the market, and we had some very good equity in it in the Mount Tabor subdivision of Portland, Oregon, in a hot real estate market, and all of a sudden then uh, we've got $200,000 tax-free in the bank. It took about three days to get an offer on the house and another 40 days to close, and you know, so we had a month there that we're kind of nervous about things, but then all of a sudden, okay, fine, we've got enough money in the bank that we can live, but we're 55. 
I'm going to live to be a hundred. Two hundred thousand dollars is not going to get me through 40, another forty-five years. What are we going to do about this? Especially since Lynn has some medical problems, and at the time, with my Blue Cross Blue Shield policy and my um, co-pays and uh, deductible and everything on my um, tax return, Schedule 1040, I was showing in um, itemized deductions about $18,000 a year in medical expenses. Um, $18,000 a year is doable when you own a business and you're doing well. <laughs> when you lose over half of your income, it gets your attention. So what are we going to do about that? Well, like I said before, we're 10 years from getting affordable health care with Medicare, so let's, um, let's go down to Mexico and see what's going on down there. I heard that you can live less, uh, on less money down there. And if we can be uh, self-supported on this couple of hundred thousand dollars for 10 years, that's $20,000 a year, that's not a big budget, but it sounds doable, and it's not doable in the United States without really lowering our standard of living. So we put the house on the market, we sold it, we have a couple hundred thousand dollars. I took $30,000 of that and I bought another house, and we spent a year fixing that up um, and, and selling it. To, you know, a fixer upper, and I sold it, and we made. Um, we made another hundred thousand dollars. So that was my pay for the year. It was a hundred thousand dollars for fixing up that house. <laughs> Lynn has a nap in the afternoon after she takes some meds for a couple of hours every day. It's just part of life. And at one point, after I had the house all fixed up and we we're kind of you know at the end of the uh, rehabilitation project of the house. She comes downstairs one day and says, would you mind just going up on the roof and pounding? I can't sleep unless there's more noise in the house. <laughs> anyway, now, you know, after a year, we're, we've, we've still, you know, we've made some more money. We've lived for a year. We've still got money in the bank. We come to Mexico. I bought that old motorhome and drove it to Mexico. And we lived in the motorhome for like six months at a time for three years. And then we would put it in storage down here and rent a house in Ajijic when we were here for six months. So that was the first three years. And um, that was our solution to being able to make it to getting Social Security and uh, having health care here that was more affordable um, for Lynn in Mexico. So that's why we're in Mexico, and there's more to the story. I mean, I own some rental properties, and I wasn't destitute, and uh, we had money to buy the first part of this property, and I've had the money to fix it up and build it into what it is today. But had I stayed in the United States, I'd be living in that motorhome. That's a true story. Or... Lynn wouldn't be getting the health care that she's needed all these years. So, now we're old enough for Medicare, and we got Social Security coming in, and so why couldn't we go back to the United States? Well, when we got Medicare, that's when we started talking about buying that bigger, better, nicer, more comfortable motorhome and keeping it in the United States as a second home. So. It's really Medicare and a supplement that enabled us to do that because for 10 years we were really nervous about leave, leaving Mexico in case we would have a medical emergency because we didn't have any insurance in the United States. So Anyway, that's why we're here. Why do we stay? Because we could afford to go back to the United States and <laughs> living in a 40-foot motorhome would be just fine with me. Lynn might want a house. Uh, and we could do that. But um, we'd have to sell this house, 
in order to go back because I don't have enough money to buy a house and I certainly don't want to put myself in the position of being in debt again. Um, I may have missed that part. When we sold the house that we lived in, when the business went away, the first thing I did was I paid off every debt so that I was debt free and I didn't have a payment for anything. So, why do I stay in Mexico? I stay in Mexico, even though I could afford to go back to the United States, because I have a better standard of living here in Mexico. I could not afford to have maids and a gardener and pool service in the United States. Fact is, I couldn't afford to have a pool in the United States. I've got a pool here, I'm looking at it. It's right there on the other side of the camera. Uh, I've lived in Mexico for 18 years. I have a half an acre of gardens and I do not mow the lawn. I haven't mowed the lawn ever in Mexico. I mowed the lawn in the United States for 40 years. I am not highly motivated to go back to the United States and mow a lawn. And I would have to. So, standard of living. Much better here in Mexico than I would be able to afford in the United States. That's reason number one. Another reason is, and people always list this when they're talking about, well, what's so great about Mexico? The food. <laughs> I like Mexican food. When I say that, I mean I like Tex-Mex, because Mexican food is not like Mexican food in the United States. Um, and here's another statement you're not going to hear all the time. I get better tacos in Portland, Oregon than I get here in Mexico. There's other Mexican food, like carne and sugo, that I just love. I love Mexican food. But um, it's not that the food is so much better. Now, here in Ajijic, locally, where we live, there are so many expats and so many expat-run and Mexican run for the benefit of expat restaurants that we got we have great international cuisine here and were I living in the United States I'm not going to get a really really good steak for 10 bucks that ain't happening so again that's part of the standard of living the food Another thing that people always list as the reason they want to live in Ajiji, Jalisco, Mexico is the weather. And um, I say this all the time and I look out the window every day and it re-verifies that I am absolutely right about this. We live at an alpine altitude, 5,200 feet, in a tropical latitude, and we have the largest lake in Mexico, it's 80 kilometers long, that mitigates the temperature. We're always 10 degrees cooler than Guadalajara. There are 8,000 foot mountains between us and the city of 5 million. And we're warmer when it's colder here than Guadalajara because the lake holds the heat. It's a heat sink. All day long at my house there's a gentle breeze coming off of the lake and as soon as the sun goes down the air reverses and it comes the other way down out of the mountains. We have 8,000 foot mountains right there. Because the heat sink of the lake, the heat rises as soon as the sun goes down. So it's a gentle breeze off the lake all day and then in the evening the breeze falls down out of the mountains because it's rising off the lake. It's eternal spring and the weather is one of the best climates in the world. Well, here's one you're not going to hear very often. We stay in Mexico, and maybe I should characterize it as we're happy to stay in Mexico because we feel safer here. I'm not going to dwell upon this one, but when we go to the United States, it's very evident to us that there is a lot of anger in the United States. Some of that comes from driving a 40-foot motorhome, pulling a car of 60 feet long. There's a lot of anger in the United States. 
and whether that's road rage or political divisiveness. Uh, enough said, I don't want to dwell upon that. We feel safe in Mexico. And of course, the big one on everybody's list is always the culture. And I've tried many times to sort out in my mind just exactly what that statement means, that the culture of Mexico is attractive. When you first come to Mexico, it's very obviously um, things like the murals on the buildings, uh, the different colored houses, the festivals that Mexico has every week, um, the little parades that they have for every saint in the Bible. There are so many things, the days of the dead, all of that culture and art is really attractive to the new mind in Mexico. But for my subject today, after living here for over 18 years, it's not something that um, gets my attention every day. You know, you live someplace, you get used to things. It becomes evident, this culture, when we go back to the States. I'll give you an example. Um, in February, we were spending time in the desert east of uh, Yuma, Arizona. And if you're familiar with Yuma, it was out east of Fortuna Hills. And when I would drive into town um, every couple of days, I had to go like a mile and a half past a housing development, and all the houses were brown. That Arizona desert tan. And there was one house that was a different architecture. It was still desert tan, but it was a different architecture. And it really would catch your eye. And it was different. And one day it occurred to me that if this was Mexico, that house wouldn't stand out at all. Because there are so many houses here that are custom built. They're all different. There isn't like, you know, I mean, there's isolated places where it's a tract house out by El Chante, all of those new little uh, condos out there. But from Hokotepec to Chapala, I can't think of another place where all the houses look the same unless it's like three or ten of them in one little enclave. The houses are all different, and they're all different colors, and that's attractive. But you don't notice it if you live here for 18 years. That's what I'm saying. You have to go somewhere else, like Arizona, where they're all brown, in order to reappreciate it. So the appreciation of that is something for people who are here uh, as, as newbies. And those of us who have lived here for a long time, we just kind of get used to it. So it's not something that keeps us here. That's the point. That's not the part of the culture that keeps us here. The culture that keeps me here, happy here, is the people. Let me just put it this way very simply. My Mexican friends, and I would include those expats who have become Mexicanized, are not in a hurry. When we go to the States, we can't, we, can, we can't believe how fast people drive. When you park in a Safeway parking lot and you walk towards the front door of the store, we cannot believe how fast people walk. And I used to tell the story about the first thing we would do when we had our old motorhome, we'd go to the States because uh, we used to bring that one to Mexico, we go to the States, and the first thing you do when you get back in the States, you go to a grocery store, because the grocery stores in, in the United States are wonderful. They're big, and they're always stocked with products, and they're just, I, I love shopping for groceries in the United States, whether it's a Safeway or a, you know, Albertsons or wh whatever. And uh, you can't park 60 foot of motorhome and car up by the door. You have to park way out. So you get out and you walk towards the front door of the store and after you've lived in Mexico for six 
months, you say, what is started? What is needed to people as you meet strangers in the street? Well, when you smile and say hello to those people coming out of the store and hurrying up to get home, you get this look like, well, what the F do you want? People in the United States are in a hurry and they're angry. I like staying in Mexico and I'm happy to have my home in Mexico because people are not in a hurry. I think way back in college I read Walden Pond by Henry David Thoreau and it made an impression upon me. There's a quote from that book. Sometimes as I lie here floating in Walden Pond I cease to live and begin to be. And what that says to me is that he lived in the moment. And that was probably a lot easier when he wrote Walden Pond than it would be in the United States today. But the point is that it's easier in Mexico too. Sometimes as I lie here floating in Walden Pond, I cease to live and begin to be. It's that part of the culture in Mexico that I find so attractive, that I find so constant as a part of my daily life, that I don't have to be in a hurry, that my friends aren't in a hurry. And if you're a young person, I get it. You're hustling, you're trying to make a better life for yourself, maybe you're motivated by the competition, you love the game, you're highly motivated, you're hurrying because you want to get ahead of the crowd. I understand. I've been there. I've done that. I was successful at it. But if you are one of those young people, I'd like you to remember or reflect upon the fact that what you're really working for is to be where I'm at. And I don't mean here in Mexico. I mean here in my mind where I'm calm and tranquil and happy and I'm not working for a better tomorrow. I'm enjoying a great today. That's where you want to be. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up and please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.